In the last video, you saw how JavaScript can get a hold of the data on a HTML form and manipulate HTML tags on a web page. Before I move on, I want to put things in context. This diagram summarises the approach I'm taking. Here you can see the user's computer, the so-called client computer, which is running a web browser and there's a web server somewhere else in the world. On the web server, there's a HTML page with JavaScript code inside it, a form handler of some kind, and the server can connect to a database. The HTML page could be a file that already exists on the server, or it could be generated by a program such as a PHP script when requested. Let's keep it simple for now, and I'll mention some of the other possibilities later. The web page is requested by the client, either by typing its URL or by following a link from another page. The page is delivered and rendered by the web browser. The user fills in the form on the web page and JavaScript programs inside the page validate the data. These programs are run by the browser on the client computer, so this is called client-side validation. When the validation checks are satisfied, the data are posted back to the server. The form data are then processed by the form handler. This could involve more validation checks and any number of other processes, including saving the data to a database. Client-side validation can greatly improve the user experience by catching invalid data before it's sent to the server. If all of the validation was done by the server alone, the user will experience a delay before being told what they need to change in order to put wrong data right. But client-side validation is easy to bypass, and a malicious user might even try to exploit it. There should always be some security checks on the server as well. Furthermore, there are certain types of validation that must be done by the server. For example, if a user is inputting a new username that has to be unique, the server-side code will need to check if it's in the database to see if the username has already been taken. Now, there's a lot of client-side validation that you can do without writing a single line of JavaScript code. HTML5 form elements have this capability built into them. HTML validation performs better than JavaScript validation, but it is less flexible. So let's begin by looking at the validation capabilities of HTML on its own. And to do this, I'm going to get rid of the JavaScript that I've already written. Now, since I've got rid of my validation function, there's no point in specifying an on-click event for the button. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm also going to change the button type to submit. And I'll say more about this in a moment. The first piece of HTML validation that I want to show you is really simple. I'm going to make my text input fields required. I'll do it for the first name and for the last name. Save the form, reload the page, and I'm going to try submit the data on the form. There's my required error message. I have to put in a name. Try again. Of course, the last name is required as well. Try again. Now, the form has been submitted. More about that in just a moment. Theoretically, then, without those required attributes, I could submit the form with no data on it at all. Now I'm going to do something with the age field. I'm going to change the type from text to number. And I can also specify a minimum, a maximum and a step value. Let's also change the label so that it's clear. Save the page, reload, and notice now I can select a value with these little spinner controls, or indeed I could type a value in. Now I pressed enter there, which has the effect of clicking OK. And because the first name is required, I have to fill it in. There's a bit of a danger here, if you think about it. I'm going to make the last name 
not required. I'll just remove this attribute, resave, reload, type in Kevin, type in an age, and then press enter, which has the effect of clicking OK. That means unless I do something about it, an attempt will be made to post the data whenever I press enter. I'll come back to that problem later. I just want to show you one more type of validation, which is incredibly powerful, and before HTML5, this had to be done with JavaScript. I'm going to use pattern matching. To speed things up, I'll copy an existing control. And I'll place it just before the button. This will be where the user can enter a discount code. And what I want to do is ensure that the user enters five, and only five, capital letters. Digits, lowercase letters, punctuation symbols are not allowed. I can do this using the pattern attribute. Let's move this down a line so we can see things a little bit better. Remember, this won't affect the appearance of the page. I'd need to put in a paragraph tag or a line break tag to do that. It's a good idea to include a title attribute as well, although you don't have to. This will give the user a little bit of guidance, as you'll see in a moment. Let's see this in action. I'll type in some lowercase letters. Hit Submit or press Enter. OK, it's asking me to fill in the first name. And again, please match the format requested, type five capital letters. And because I didn't get an error message, I can see it's happy with that. If I just click OK now, type in the name, click OK again, the discount code isn't required, so I can leave it blank altogether. You can do some very, very sophisticated things with pattern matching. Let's make a field for the user to enter their email address. And here is the expression which I need to use. Now, admittedly, it's a rather complex looking expression, and there's a lot to be said about pattern matching. You can look it up if you want to know more details. Suffice to say for now, it's exactly the same control characters that I would use if I was doing this in JavaScript. Let's give it a go. Clearly not an email address. But that's acceptable. To summarise then, client-side validation checks the form data before they are submitted to the web server. Client-side validation is executed by the web browser. The web browser doesn't just render HTML text. It's also a runtime environment for programs. Client-side validation can reduce the network traffic exchanged between the client and the server. It means there's less chance of an error message being sent back to the client because the data was invalid. Client-side validation can be performed by JavaScript programs or client-side validation can be performed without writing a single line of program code. HTML5 has a number of validation capabilities already built into it. Client-side validation can include required fields, maximum and minimum values, and some very sophisticated pattern matching.